The amount that those alpha cards can generate on land is huge. Being beaten has kind of been, you know, when you lose, it's like, oh, it sucks. But because I'm one of the bigger names in the game, I kind of always felt, well, at least somebody's there smiling at their screen that they beat Matt Clark, right? But if it's the bot, then there's no, I don't get that satisfaction, right? Because the bot beat me. It's a little, a little rush from going, oh, I beat, I beat the Flesh Golem guy. I beat the guy with two castles. I kind of feel like modern is maybe where I've got to go, even though I'm a creature of habit and really like playing with the alpha cards. I, I don't think I can justify it anymore after these changes. I tried it a few months ago and just stuck in drops. Like, I could not get out of drops. And it's ridiculous that I got a deck that's worth oodles of money, and then there's some guy with a deck worth you know, $200 and he's stopping me from getting out of bronze. It's ironic that people with no cards and people with heaps of cards were both getting stuck, or currently are both getting stuck in that uh, top of bronze. Uh, yeah. It's a big, big roadblock. And the player experience or new player experience, that's all well and good, but we can't have this big roadblock sitting there. If someone who's been around for five years and has a deck worth 200 grand, 300 grand, mm. can't get out of bronze, what hope does new Well, have? that was the issue, yeah? Bronze is so limited in strategy or so limited in abilities and all that, that there was only few meta plays that people would go for. Lots yeah. to be excited about, Bob. The Colony and Script airdrop is starting for those holding GLX, GLUSD. So that whole ecosystem, I think, is really starting to ramp up. And it's easy to downplay how important it is to have a, a, a real showman, a real salesman at the helm. And so I kind of feel like the, the GLS, the Moon Carts, Arcade Colony, if we really start to hit some green candles here and they all have Aggie pushing and going on TV shows and, uh, and the like and really growing that whole ecosystem, then when Web2 companies look for a way to incorporate Web3, to transition their game to a Web3, what we're going to find is that Aggie can say, hey, here's what we'll do. We can get all this sorted for you. We can handle it. We can do it. And look at our player base. Look at how many people are playing Splinterlands. Look how many people commented on the Twitter. There's like 400 comments or something on the when Killer Waves said, what do you think about Splinterlands? Hundreds and hundreds of comments from Splinterlands people just absolutely firing up Twitter. Well, as those green candles hit and more players get re-energized and come back when those web 2 companies want to go oh what are, what are we going to do do we want to pay gas fees or whatever aggie has this perfect storm of fomo and push and shove and we've got the history that we know what we're doing right we've got the background and if you come with us you have an already pre-established player base of people who have a login for your game yeah. if he can translate that if he can communicate that um then that whole arcade colony thing can absolutely blow up really yeah. really easy also check out my travel vlog on Bob Fett. Peace out.